Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use our fully integrated environment, Fidelity, in short videos of a few minutes. In this video, I will show you how to analyze a mesh. After a mesh has been generated, you need to enable the mesh analysis. Select the mesh setup and go to the Control tab. In the Resource Control window, you can choose how many cores to use for the mesh analysis. But it is recommended to load and post-process the mesh with one core only when using a single machine to avoid multi-threads communication penalty. More cores should be used when several machines are selected to distribute the required RAM among these machines. Then, click on the Load Results button or use the plot icon which is a shortcut to the left of the mesh setup name in the tree. The spinning circle in front of the mesh setup in the tree indicates that the mesh is loaded and available for analysis. You can then expand the mesh quality fields in the mesh setup and select a quality criterion from the list. Let's select the skewness and create a cell range by entering the requested minimum and maximum values. The grayed out values above give you an idea of the min and max values of the selected criterion in the whole mesh. Click on Compute. The total number of cells within the range defined will be printed in the Properties panel. The cells within the range are created as an object in the tree under the corresponding quality criterion. You can use the buttons to show or hide the cells falling in the selected range and their location. I want to highlight one very useful criterion, which is a distance to geometry. This criterion allows the user to detect where the mesh differs from the tessellated geometry. Here, for example, I can detect the mesh cells that are away from the geometry by more than 0 0.001. I can see that there are 12 cells in this region. This can be very useful to pinpoint projection issues in a complex mesh where you may not necessarily have bad quality cells. Finally, let's talk about the bad cell button. Users can define bad cells by creating a new cell range with a modified threshold and activating the bad cell option before launching the mesh generation. A folder called bad cells will be created in the tree after the mesh generation when such cells are present. Select the folder in the tree or the selections inside to highlight these cells in the graphics area. By default, if the mesh contains negative, concave or twisted cells, a selection will be created respectively for each criterion in the bad cell folder. Finally, you can create a quality criterion color contour using this button in the toolbar. Select a support and a quality criterion from the field in the property panel and click apply. A color contour probe is created in the probe tab of the support properties panel. The statistics of the quality criterion are available in the tab. The color contour is visualized on the mesh in the graphics area. You can also create a color contour on a cutting plane through the mesh. Let's first create a cutting plane, then click on color contour in the toolbar and select a quality criterion. The probe is created on the cutting plane support. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming videos like this. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop us a line down below or connect with us on LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a great Tuesday.